Osmosis is due to the physics of water, ions, and probability. Imagine a membrane that has a water channel in it, an aquaporin, water molecules, these dots, it's moving around at random. If we have the same number of water molecules on each side of this membrane, then the probability of a water molecule hitting the aquaporin and moving through in one direction is equal to the probability of a water molecule hitting from the other direction and moving through. There will be no net movement. Water molecules moving in both directions, but never any change in the proportion on both sides. Now let's add in ions, say some sodium and chloride on one side. They cannot move across the membrane. This water channel is too small and has the wrong charge distribution for them. Let's start off with the same number of water molecules on each side. There are more than this. I'm representing them by five. The probability that a water molecule will cross depends upon the likelihood of hitting that opening from either side. With these ions here, we have a difference some of the water molecules are being attracted to chloride and sodium. In fact, every sodium and chloride has a shell of water molecules around it. In the case of sodium, positively charged, the water molecules would be arranged with the oxygens closest because the oxygen has a slight negative charge. In the case of chloride, the hydrogens are closer. Let's redraw my water molecules showing some of them near sodiums or chlorides and others free to move. We have the same number of water molecules, but a large number of them are attracted to chloride and sodium, and so they're not moving. It's possible that a water molecule knock one off, but it would quickly be replaced by a new one, the hydration shell around each ion. In this situation, we have five water molecules on one side bouncing around, and only one on the upper side. The likelihood that a water molecule hits this aquaporin and goes through is gonna be much higher from the bottom of my image here. Let's move one across. Eventually, another one will go through. And at this point, we'll have three on the bottom and three on the top. Now, there's no net movement of water molecule in and out. There are three moving freely on one side, three moving freely on the other but there are a lot more water molecules on this top side than on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven total. If this was a cell, it would swell. That's osmosis. Every time when you think about osmosis, you need to think about how many water molecules are free to move. Water moves not because there's some force of osmosis, but because protein that has some areas that are positive and negative, or ions, or sugar, which has areas that are slightly positive or negative, any of those will attract water molecules. And the important piece is how many water molecules are free to move. All the ones that are attracted to a protein or an ion are unable to move. Therefore, they're not contributing to the net movement of water back and forth across a cell.